Five or six years ago, I was playing some Super Nintendo games when I noticed something peculiar on my Fatal Fury special cart. Um, I'd never noticed this before, but it had a little Dolby Surround logo on it, um, the same kind you'd see on VHS tapes or Laserdisc sleeves. And this sent me down a rabbit hole. Uh, and I'd like to share with you what I found, because it turns out that, yes, uh, most of your old consoles going at least all the way back to the Super Nintendo are, in fact, capable of multi-channel surround sound. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about how that works and how you can make use of it. Uh, so in the early days of home theater surround sound, most media was making use of what we would call matrixed surround. Uh, and what this means is they were able to send four different channels of audio across the two stereo RCA cables that uh, were already in use with most audio equipment at the time. Uh, and they did this by piggybacking an inverted phase signal on each of those two channels which effectively doubles the available channels for a surround mix. So you have your normal left and right signals as usual, uh, but one of them is now carrying a rear channel on its inverted phase, and the other is carrying a center channel. So you now have four different channels for four different speakers that you know go around you in the room, wherever your listening space is or whatever. Um, this is especially clever because it's backwards compatible with existing home audio systems. If you had a two-channel stereo system, it would just play the left and right signals normally. And if you had uh, a mono speaker coming out of your TV, for instance, it would just make everything down to that one speaker anyway, and you would never know the difference. But if you had an AV receiver that was capable of decoding and separating those inverted phase signals or an outboard surround processor unit that would connect to your main stereo amplifier, uh, you now had access to four channel surround and in some cases 4.1 if your receiver was capable of uh, sending everything below a certain frequency threshold out to your subwoofer uh, if this sounds familiar to how quadraphonic lps worked on vinyl it should uh, it's a pretty similar process. So this is all fine and good for analog movie formats, but how does it relate to games? Well, theoretically, anything with stereo audio outputs should be capable of producing this effect, as long as the hardware is capable of inverting that phase and separating those signals. Uh, hardware much like the Sony SMP audio processor inside the Super Nintendo. Uh, conversely, the Genesis slash Mega Drive is capable of stereo audio, uh, although you'll need to use the headphone output for the Model 1 units, um, but to my knowledge it was unable to produce Matrix Surround, and no games for that system uh, ever made any native use uh, of it, as far as I can tell. Um, I can only assume this is the primary thing that all the kids on the playground were arguing about in the bloody console wars of the early 90s. Uh, similarly, as much as I adore the Saturn, uh, and this is true for Sega CD as well, um, I don't know of any games that utilize Matrix Surround on that system either. Uh, even with their CD audio capabilities. Uh, however, there are a few games here and there that made use of Q sound, uh, which is an algorithmic solution uh, used heavily by Capcom and Sega in the arcades uh, to kind of simulate the effect of surround sound from a two-speaker configuration. It's not going to fool anyone into thinking that there are more speakers in the room than there are, but it is a cool effect in its own right that adds some interesting depth to a stereo mix. Even on surround-capable platforms, it's not always clear which games made use of it. Uh, some games like Super Turrican or Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo would clearly emblazon the Dolby Surround logo across their packaging with pride. Um, and other games didn't pay for a Dolby license, but quietly included a surround option in their settings, um, like in the game settings. Um, and still more games would limit their in-game settings to either mono or stereo, regardless of whether there was a Dolby logo on the box or whatever. Uh, in many of those cases, setting the game to stereo uh, and your receiver to surround decoding uh, would enable those surround features. Uh, this was especially common in the PS2 era where most of the library was touting Dolby Pro Logic 2, uh, but it still happens now in the HDMI age. I played a PS5 game earlier this week that had 7.1 object positional audio, uh, but the audio options in the settings were just listed as mono or stereo. Stereo in this case would of course auto detect your system settings uh, and respond appropriately. Uh, older games that did this to name a few off the top of my head, uh, like Final Fantasy VI, uh, Super Castlevania IV, Resident Evil II, Sagan Densetsu III, I think the original Star Fox. I may be wrong on some of those, but I'm going off of memory here. Um, anyway, there's a bunch. There's a ton. We started seeing more games, a lot more games, with Dolby Surround as a standard towards the later years of the original PlayStation. Uh, by this point, more users had the hardware necessary to enjoy those features and that format. And after Final Fantasy VII, it kind of effectively ushered in this age of massive summer blockbuster games uh, with enormous technical budgets as a selling point. 
uh, as such Square in particular were huge early adopters of Dolby Surround. Uh, once Final Fantasy VIII and Chrono Cross were out, the floodgates were pretty much open. Chrono Cross is, in particular is actually one of my favorite examples because they mixed uh, Yasunori Mitsuda's legendary score in Surround. So you have different instruments coming out of different speakers all around you. It rules. Um, Ocarina of Time is another great example. Uh, there's actually a good chunk of N64 games that make use of Matrix to Surround. Uh, but that first time that you walk out of Zora's Domain back into Hyrule Field and hear the waterfall crashing behind you, that's a that's a real good vibe. Um, unfortunately, the only Dreamcast games I'm aware of that use explicit multi-channel audio are the NHL 2K series. Um, but thankfully, there are some folks out there doing some documentation on that work right now. I know there are also some 3DO games with Dolby Surround, like the original Need for Speed, uh, and potentially some PC Engine CD games as well. Um, I still need to do some more research on this. I apologize. I don't have any of that hardware to test on my own. Uh, at least at the moment. This does get a little bit weirder once you reach the sixth generation of consoles. Uh, the PS2, for example, has stereo audio as well as a uh, an optical audio output uh, for Toslink. Um, and most of its library is capable of ProLogic 2, which is a five channel surround codec, albeit with relatively limited bandwidth, especially for the time. Um, the GameCube and Wii also use ProLogic 2 over their stereo audio cables or digitally through aftermarket HDMI solutions like the Carby or the Wii Duel, etc. Um, the Xbox, on the other hand, um, is capable of full-on discrete Dolby Digital 5.1 uh, via optical audio, and it is magnificent. Uh, go set that up and play some Black or Burnout 3 or whatever and turn it up real loud and have yourself a time. Okay, so how can you use this stuff at home uh, right now? Well, thankfully, there's been a tremendous amount of work done on the internet in recent years uh, to catalog how to get the absolute best video quality uh, out of your older consoles. If you want to get started there, I recommend checking out websites like RetroRGB.com and YouTube channels like My Life in Gaming. Uh, there's a whole scene of super knowledgeable people out there that can help you get a beautiful, lag-free video experience. But I haven't seen as much talk about the audio side of things, which is why I wanted to talk about all this crap in the first place. Um, so just like with video, you basically have two options. You can go digital and modern, or you can go analog and retro. And it all comes down to personal preference and convenience and what makes sense for your setup. Um, the one constant is that you're going to need a capable multi-channel AV receiver and some speakers. My retro setup, I run all of my audio into a Sony STR DA1 ES. I picked this receiver because A, it's an ES series receiver that I found at a Goodwill, and B, it's compatible with every kind of audio format I can throw at it. If you're gonna do the retro route, I do recommend finding a receiver that can decode ProLogic 2, as that format is backwards compatible with ProLogic 1 slash Dolby Surround. This receiver takes all of my audio inputs via stereo RCA and optical toss link and sends them out to a 5.1 speaker configuration. For newer hardware, like the original Xbox, that means I can utilize all channels of discrete digital audio, and for older hardware, like the Super Nintendo, it just duplicates the single rear channel signal across both rear speakers. It also handles all four of the weird Laserdisc audio formats I throw at it, but we can talk about that some other time. From a modern setup, I run everything through a Denon 4K receiver that outputs to a 7.1 speaker configuration. Uh, I can confirm that playing PS1 games physically or digitally on a PS3 will work, as will playing Super Nintendo or Super Famicom games on an analog Super NT or even a Mister. Uh, all you have to do is tell your receiver to decode Dolby Surround, it will take the digital stereo signal being passed over HDMI and decode it appropriately just like an analog receiver would. I have noticed this can be uh, a bit iffy from model to model regarding receivers, um, so double check that yours uh, will handle either ProLogic or Dolby Surround or whatever because there are some uh, newer receivers made recently that don't tend to uh, play super nice with the older audio formats, but most of them uh, seem to work just fine. There you have it. Uh, this was kind of a quick flyby uh, overview of surround sound on retro games consoles. I didn't want to get too, too deep on this one, but I hope this is helpful. Uh, basically, you just need a way to play your old games, a decent AV receiver, and some speakers, like more than two of them. Uh, anyway, take care, be well, stay safe, bye.